Chapter 30 Justice is Dead You are listening at FameTV.info Avalon fluttered her eyes open. The first thing she saw was the crystal wall. Her reflection, or rather, the priestess backslash reflection, stared back at her. The horns protruding on top of her head were still bothering her. Not to mention the bluish pale complexion. Even when she was alive, she had been fair dot skinned, but this was on another level. Slowly lifting her head, she frowned upon realizing where she was. It was the asylum, a crystal box in the outskirts of the game where the players who reached their five lives limit were sent until further notice. Looking to her left, it became clear what she was doing there. Elixir, she called out to the man in white pants, white coat, and white in everything, standing on that side with his back facing her. Usually, one would say that only old people have white hair. But for the rest of the watchers, it was their designated color. The watchers were what mortals would consider as gods. As their title speaks for itself, they watch over people. They record everything from birth to death. Avalon only learned of this when Elixir showed her a thick book bound by white leather that contained her life backslash s biography from the day she was born up to the day of her death. They missed not a single detail. Did you remember why you were renamed as priestess? Elixir backslash s soft but authoritative voice rang inside the small crystal prison, sending shivers through her skin. He spoke without turning to face Avalon, making her wonder what he was looking at. The outside of the crystal box was a fog-dot-covered area, concealing each prison from the others. Avalon blinked. She briefly recalled the things Elixir had told her after she had woken up in the body of the priestess with a different personality. I was chosen, Avalon replied meekly. Yes, you were chosen to be part of the Watcher backslash S circle for the gentle heart that you had. You were given an allowance of time to heal from the anger, pain, and betrayal you felt after learning the cause of your demise. And you were given the power to do what you wished to obtain justice but never were you given the right to execute vengeance. Avalon looked at the ground. She closed her eyes, feeling a cool sensation inside her chest, and new elixir backslash s reprimand had woken the priestess. And this was not beyond elixir backslash s knowledge. Smirking, the priestess gathered herself to stand and stared at Elixir with a raised chin. Justice. Did humans ever honor this so dot called justice? In all the years that you have been a watcher, when did you see it at play? By fair game, that is. Elixir didn't backslash t respond. He slowly turned and came face to face with the priestess. The meek Avalon was no longer around. The priestess scoffed. She let out a sigh and hummed, coming towards Elixir. So you see, she dusted off invisible specks from his shoulder. Justice is long dead. Vengeance. This is nothing but a little payback. I backslash V been very patient, Elixir. I backslash V waited several millennia for this. And now you want to stop me. I backslash am not going to kill those children. Elixir kept a straight face. You will keep them alive, and then what? Punish them for something they do not even know about. Is that your definition of justice? The priestess pursed her lips. Who said I was looking for justice, she smiled, gesturing at their surroundings. I backslash am merely having my fun. Holy. Zara muttered. She exchanged glances with Beatrix as a swarm of zombies had arrived, coming from every corner, toppling over each other, and had to stumble and get back on their feet before running towards Jasper and Estheriel. Some got trampled on, their skull, hands, or feet getting smashed at the stampede. Zara lost count on how many there were, but she knew she had to do something. B, you need to keep this door open. Do you hear me? I backslash am not sure how long I could hold, but I promise I will try. Beatrix replied. Zara nodded, looking right into her friend backslash s eyes. Hold it for as long as you can. Okay. But hurry. Zara took a deep breath. 
In 3, 2, 1, Zara left Beatrix to hold the heavy shutter steady. She grunted with effort. Go. Zara wasted no time and pulled her gun out, firing at the zombies she could hit, her eyes transfixed on her two friends. J. A, you need to get here now. Fall back. Fall back, she screamed at the top of her lungs. Amidst the chaos, Jasperth was able to glance towards Zara. He didn't backslash T miss the frantic expression on her face. He and Asthiriel needed to make it towards the safe zone. A, we need to get going now, he called out, firing bullets at the horde heading for him and Asthiriel. On your count. Asthiriel replied, firing her gun unstoppably now too. The growls and the scrunching of feet as the zombies toppled all over each other had their surroundings feel hot, and the rotting smell became more noticeable. No counting. Let backslash s fall back. We will be overtaken. Start moving then. Asthiriel barked, taking a few steps back. Jaspreth positioned himself behind her, facing outward to keep shooting at the swarm of zombies. Zara was keeping the path open for the two. She was just a short distance from the opening, briefly glancing towards Beatrix in case some zombies would chance on getting inside. They can backslash T have that. Back to back, the two kept the zombies at bay, the sound of rapid dot fire becoming music to their ears. Slowly, they were heading towards the safe zone building. When we make it to the next level, I will demand a 30 dot minute nap. Asthiriel shouted. She let out a curse before crying a battle cry, firing at zombies left and right. It seemed that the more they killed, the number of incoming zombies doubled. Jasperth glanced at the small opening of the metal shutters, catching sight of Beatrix struggling to keep it open while Zara kept the path clear for them. Determined, Jasperth screamed his battle cry as well, following Asthiriel backslash s rapid dot firing as they neared Zara. A loud boom shook the ground when they were only several inches apart. Bluish smoke rose towards the reddish skies. The commotion had confused the zombies for a good second before they proceeded to come after the four. On the one hand, Zara and her friends had lost their aim, causing them to kick and push away some zombies who managed to leap towards either of them. Guys! Beatrix called out. Her hold had slipped and had her struggling to keep the metal shutters open a little wider. The sudden eruption had her almost lose her hold on it, her knees shaking at the effort. But the heavy weight of the metal door was slowly draining her. She couldn't backslash T keep it open for long. It backslash S either you make it in now or, she let out a grunt. We backslash LL have to find another way in. Listen to the full novel at fametv.info, direct link in the description.